nobody answered. I called about three times, nobody answered. I sent text message, nobody answered. It turns out that this devil have no limit. But God has a higher plan than what devil had in mind. Amen. So somehow devil made the phone not to ring. I'm sitting in my car in front of a building. She's right there in the lobby and I'm calling her. She didn't know I'm there because the phone was not ringing. This is our iPhone that has connection anywhere. Our Verizon, you can call it inside the hole. They will answer. But this particular moment, the phone didn't answer. The phone didn't ring. And I kept wondering. I saw emergency cars. I said, maybe my wife is in the emergency car already. But a voice told me, be still and know that I am God. Amen. So I was quiet. And after about 10, 20 minutes, here comes my wife. Calling, say, are you there? I said, I've been here. She comes into the car and shows me her phone. The phone didn't ring. No missed call. No text message came in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Then I said, is that right? And my wife is screaming, I need help. I need help. I need help. Literally collapsing in front of the seat of the car. She's screaming, I need help. I need help. So I placed my hand on his, her head. And I called the Lord Jesus to the sin. Amen. And I said, now, devil, I know your game. Yeah. You are the one that made the phone not to ring. Mm -hmm. Immediately I said this, my precious brothers and sister. All the calls I made came right in. All the tests came right in. Right at that moment. I said, now you've been exposed. Therefore, be gone. And my wife began to say, I felt something. I felt something lifted up from me. I feel something lifted up from me, but it, it was pounding. She didn't go to work all weekend. She couldn't even come out from the bed on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And today she's here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that devil has his games. Amen. But friends, we are resolute. It's not a time to play a game. Amen. You just know who you are. Amen. And you keep pressing on. Amen. You keep pressing on. Amen. Whenever something will come to your heart to discourage you. Yes, sir. And the Lord will come and push you forward. Say, keep Amen. pressing on. Amen. Keep Amen. pressing on. Amen. Because it will not be long. Amen. The time is fast spent, the prophet said. Yeah. We are now living on a borrowed time. Amen. It will not be long. And we are going home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Lord. So devil came to make her sick. But God said, I'll put her in fellowship today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am happy she's here with us. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm happy for all of us that are here. Amen. The week was very challenging. You know, sometimes we pray and ask God for something, but God knows how he's going to do it. That's part of the message today. We're going to get to Amen. it. But we just give a few testimonies. Hallelujah. Every time I come to our place of fellowship, I say, Lord, I need somebody who needs prayer. There must be somebody who is sick. There must be somebody who needs their touch. Would you send the person our way? Because we want the sick to be healed. We want people to know that Jesus is the same today. So we say this prayer, but you don't know how God will send them. But a Christian, one of them that called on Thursday, I believe, and said you have a young man that somebody told you that was about the put to block, right? Was that right? What's his name again? Uh, Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, somebody. But we shall take Oliver, brother Oliver, also to prayer when we finish the service today. We don't know the condition. And God is the only one that knows the condition. It was the same week, the same Thursday, I believe. I wake up in the morning and there's a text message from a co-worker that said, her daughter needs urgent heart transplant. She's in ICU. A young daughter. So I text my phone. I text her yesterday to see how the daughter is doing. She says she's still in ICU. They need an urgent heart transplant. And I told her, when you see your daughter, just put your hand on her. And say a simple prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, receive a new heart. And she said, Brother Paul, I will do exactly what you have said. I said, it's not what I said, it's what Jesus said. Because I know that Jesus Christ is still giving a new heart. 
When you listen to testimonies even on YouTube, there are many testimonies of people who say they received a new heart. And I stand here to tell you that I know my lungs were touched by the Lord. Amen. For my lungs were supposed to have ischemia. Blood is not supposed to flow in my lung. I'm supposed to have medication until I die. Call Lebanon. Is that right? You were there with me at, in, at the hospital in Tinek. But today, not one medication was given. Amen. Not one. Amen. And I know it's a new lung that I received from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when a Christian say, her mother received a new kidney. Hallelujah. Amen. If God can give kidney, he can give lung, he can also give her a heart. Amen. For them that believe. Hallelujah. Amen. You just have to believe and it's given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is not just preaching words, but in demonstration of the spirit. Amen. Apostle Paul said, not just in words. Hallelujah. But in demonstration of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what we are here to do each time we gather. We don't come to play games. We we're not in popularity context. We're not in politics. We're not to be seen. We come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet said he came to the pulpit to set up the podium for Lord Jesus to be elected. Hallelujah. Amen. He said everyone is ready for election sometimes. He was talking about in the message. He, in that message was about what does it take to overcome? In the message, what does it take to overcome? The prophet said that he is lifting up a panel. He's lifting up a podium. He's trying to set up Jesus Christ to be the winner. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. So if Jesus is my winner, then he's everything to me. Hallelujah! Amen. And if I'm an ambassador of Jesus, it means that all heaven is guiding me. And if you be an ambassador, it means also he's behind you. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot send an ambassador with no parking. Hallelujah. Amen. That means that everything you do is there to pack you up. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Let's be on our feet. This morning, we have a, a message from the Lord as always. Because, you know, the message has been preached. All we are doing is laying emphasis. Hallelujah. On what has been preached so that it will lift up our heart. And we can be able. Hallelujah. Amen. We can to run the race that's been fight before us, hallelujah. Because the word God is still speaking, hallelujah. The word of God never said that God will stop speaking, hallelujah. God will always speak, glory. Amen. God will always speak because his children are still here. Amen. The word of God came to the prophet. The prophet told us the word. We have to keep speaking the word, hallelujah. Amen. Because the fivefold ministry will keep going on until Christ come, hallelujah. Amen. So this morning... The title of our message is Limiting God. Amen. Limiting God. How people limit God. How you yourself can even limit God. Amen. And then we shall see whether this is a true revelation. To say that you want to limit God. You want to put God in a box. You want to put God in a shoe somewhere. Or you want to put God in a closet somewhere. Or you have some kind of a book where that's where you put God. Or you have some picture and that's where you put God. Or you have a car somewhere and that's where you put God. You know, you know people spend time trying to find a place to put God. But we shall see this morning whether it is divine, whether it's the will of God for you to put him in those conditions. Hallelujah! So this morning we ask God to unleash the blessing for which the word was given so that when it goes to your heart, the heart will yearn to know him more. Hallelujah. Amen. And for all those that are here, those that will listen, be it on the internet, be it on YouTube, wherever you listen, I pray it will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. For our brothers and sisters that we don't see this morning, for one reason or the other, I pray it will be a blessing. Hallelujah. We are all united in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We are united in faith. Glory. Amen. It is one baptism. It is one Jesus. It is one Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not separated. Hallelujah. You may fellowship wherever you want to fellowship. I don't care. You can fellowship in Bermuda. You can fellowship in Jamaica. You can fellowship in New York. You can fellowship anywhere you want to fellowship. But one thing we have come on, the prophet said, there is one standard. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you come God's provided way, Amen. God will meet you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. So this morning we have a couple of scripture, a couple of messages. We try to keep in time. 
I know it's 10 to 12, so I have to do my best to make sure that, uh, you know, by 40 minutes, we should be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. The first scripture we're going to read will be the book of John. John chapter 1. From verse 1. We're going to read John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. So once you get that scripture, you put your hand there. Then we we'll bow down our head and offer a prayer unto the Lord. And set the atmosphere for the world to comfort. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads. Most Precious Lord, the Alpha and the Omega. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, it is in my heart this morning, Lord, as we go into this message, to remember the two prayer requests that we attended before us. That brother Oliver, who is at the hospital, we don't know the condition. There's only one that knows the condition, and that is you. You have the key to life. You have the key for this body to still be here. You have the key to hell. You have the key to heaven. You have every key. You have it. We're just asking you, Lord, if it pleases you, to turn the condition of that young man into joy. But we pray that when that is done, they will come and glorify only your name. Because you want to get glory. You cannot share your glory with no one. Yes. My Lord, my God, at the same time, I also ask you for that young girl called Tamika, yes. whose mother sent a message and requested for prayer. Amen. Lord, if there's no sickness, there will be no healing. They are still bad in Gilead. You are still the God that healed our own sickness. Amen. You said you were bruised for our iniquity. Yes. You said that the chastisement of our peace was upon you. Amen. And by your stripes we were healed. You were wounded for our transgression. Yes. My Lord, my God, yes. I ask you to have mercy yes. on these two sick people yes. who requested for prayer. Yes. And as we are here before you this morning, yes. the word is coming forth, Lord. Yes. I don't want to be seen. Yes. I don't want to be heard. Yes. I want you to speak. Amen. Precious Lord, Take this lips, take this vessel, let it be an honor unto thee. And all that are hearers of this word, let them also be doers of this word. For what shall it profit a man, you say, to gain the whole world and lose his soul? For the soul that sinned, that soul must die. But this body has already been condemned. For this body was shaped in iniquity. And came to this world speaking lie. And you said that the scripture profit this body even nothing. But when this body is healed, it is just the earnest. It is a down payment of the real healing. Hallelujah. It is to remind us that one day there will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. And that day is almost upon us. But while we tarry, while we wait, I ask you, Lord, to bless us this morning, Lord. Let your word come to encourage us. Let your word come to strengthen us up. Let your word come to purify us. Let your word come to take off all the excess fat. Let your word come to purge our heart. Let us stand the test of time because you have said so. Because you gave us the infallible word. You say heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will not pass away. Now, Lord Jesus, speak, my Lord. Speak. My Lord, speak my Lord Amen. as I heal this vessel and I ask with thanksgiving in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. There was a man that was sent from God. Whose name was John. The same came for a witness. To bear witness of that light. That all men through him might believe. He was not the light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own they received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become 
the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Limiting God. That's what we're talking about this morning. You know, in the world, because the physical types, the spiritual, for you that are business people or that understand business, a business have a type called limited liability. What does that mean? It means that your risk in this business is limited to your investment. If the business goes down, nobody can touch anything else you have besides what you put in that business. So you can now say the business has a limited liability. And without going deep into it, there are different forms of that limited liability. So man understands that they need to have things that are limited. Is that right? Yeah. Now, going further up into that, you also have a concept that in life, we have limited resources. Are you with me? Yeah. Everything you have in life has what we call limited resources. Yes. Because you have limited resources, that's why you make choice. Mm. In economics, that's why you make what we call a scale of preference. What does that mean? It means you sit down and you say to yourself, I have a need for these things, but I will not do this, I will not do this, I will do this now, and I come to this. It's just making a choice of what you will do before the other. Why are you making that choice? Sometimes you call it a budget. A country makes a budget. A state makes a budget. Human being, everyone makes a budget. Why are you making budget? Because you have limited resources. Is that right? Yeah. You cannot take care of everything you want to take care of. You take care of some and you leave some. Is that right? Amen. But that is the physical. But when it comes to God, hallelujah, Amen. God is limitless. Mm. Amen. Amen. God does not have limited resources. Amen. But man in their thought is beginning to think they can put God in their own form as a human being. And I tell you, friends, this I have seen throughout my own being as a human being and throughout the history of this world. That has always been the case. Man has tried their best to limit God. They want to bring God to their own form. They thought they have known everything about God. No, you don't. There's no prophet that knows everything about God. It's impossible for any flesh to claim to know everything about God. No, you do not. For that's not the word of God. Because God said, let every man's word be a lie. My word be true. Now, God has told you who he is. That doesn't mean you know everything about him. It's two different things. I'm standing here. I am brother Paul. You know who I am. You don't know everything about me. You're sitting here, precious brother. I know you. I don't know everything about you. Is that right? Amen. Sometimes God will open the mind of the prophet. He said, I'm discerning you now. I am trying to think about what you're thinking now. And the prophet can tell you what you're thinking at that moment. Is that right? But that's at that moment. And after that moment, you go again. You see who you are. One of the definitions of human being for you to know is that a human being is the most unpredictable species. Did you hear that? Amen. Even in science, the human being is the most unpredictable, which is to say you can't predict a human being. So if you can't predict a human being, how do you think you can predict God? Amen. Where is that mind you have to predict God? Who told you you can predict God? God is limitless. Amen. God is infallible. Amen. God has no beginning. God has no end. You just read in the book of John, in that beginning. And when you go to Genesis, Moses put it, in that beginning. What is the beginning? Nobody knows. You cannot tell me the beginning. Because he said, in the beginning. But what's the beginning? Nobody knows. So you start from where God told you something, but you don't know in the beginning. Because in the beginning, he was self-existing. He was the Elohim. And nobody can tell you what's in the beginning. So Moses just said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And John, which is a type of the bride in the ministry, just begin to lay emphasis. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So you could not separate God from his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is limitless. Amen. His word is limitless. Amen. His action is limitless. Amen. His deed is limitless. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When a man thinks there is no God, oh, look at that man twice. When any human being says there is no God, look at that person twice. 
wife and say, friend, I think you're a little bit out of line. Why? Because God is sovereign. Amen. The sovereignty of God cannot always be talked about because when a human being talks about God having obligation, do not confuse obligation with sovereignty. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, God is obligated to do what he said he will do. But because of his sovereignty, he can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet will tell you, if you come to God, the same way somebody else comes to God, yes. God is obligated to do what he did. But what you have to understand is that the obligation of God cannot overshadow his sovereignty. Amen. He's sovereign. Amen. He can do as he chooses. Amen. That's why people still die today. Somebody can be healed of cancer, and the next person is not healed of cancer. He's the same God. He can do as he chooses. Yes. He can have an inspiration day and say, it's over for this person. Mm. And no matter what you do, it's over. Mm. It's not because the person didn't pray right. It's not the best because the person is not living right. After all, our prophet William Manuel Brenham was crushed in a car accident. Mm. He lived all his life, but was still crushed in a car accident. Because God said, it is time. It's not because God could not heal him. It's not because he did anything to merit that. But Jesus said once upon a time, they came to a man. And the disciples said, Master, what sin did this man commit right. to be blind? Jesus said, there was no sin, but that the glory of God might be seen. Amen. It is the sovereignty of God doing whatever he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And no man can challenge him. Amen. See, see, the prophet... In the, in, the, in the message, in the prophet said in the message, he said, if God deny him, if God send him to hell, mm. he said, I will still love him. Right. Why? He said, suffering God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if God denied me, mm. if God send me to hell, I will still love him. Hallelujah. In the message, talk on the world. Mm -hmm. The prophet said, I believe we know him. It does not yet appear what we shall be right. like, but we know who will have a body like his. Amen. For we shall see him as he is. Amen. Well, that's enough for me. Just to be where he's at. Amen. That's all that. Amen. Have you ever had an idea of what you wanted to do when it was all over and you got to meet him? Did you ever think what you wanted to do? Where is what I would like to see? Here is what I would like to see. Get down on my hands and on my knees and crawl up to where he's standing and just pat his foot like that. See, that's all I want. Then, if he will turn me away and send me away, and if I do go to hell, I will feel like I have, I have been dearly paid. I feel like I've been dearly paid. That's right. For all the effort, if I live a hundred years, if I can only pat his foot just one time, mm. think of how, how wonderful and what he will be to me. And I love him tonight with all my heart. And I believe if he will just cast me away, he will still just. And if I have to go to hell, and if there's be such a thing as to love me in hell. I will still love him for what he has been to me. Even now, besides what I know, that he will still be to me. That is the message. Talk on the word. 1953, August 31, 98. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the prophet of my day. Amen. Something struck him to know Amen. that God is sovereign. Amen. And you cannot live it God. God can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. When you approach him knowing this, it will now up to him to receive you. Yeah. But when you come to him with pomposity right. or audacity yeah. or to talk to you like you're talking to a man, he will reduce you to a base. Hallelujah! That's the problem most of us have. Even in the message, some people think they have figured everything about God. Mm. Who told you so? Mm. Where is that in the message? That's not the message. Because God is not a man that you can challenge him. 
self and wretch like me. I'm going to tell you something when I was reading this. Prophet William Abraham didn't read the Bible until he was 21. He never read the Bible, brothers and sisters. He said somebody told him to read James. He was reading Genesis. He didn't know the difference. He didn't know the difference. All through before you came to 21, he never read the Bible. Yet he is the messenger of my church age. Amen. God is sovereign. Amen. God can do whatever he wants to do. And whatever he wants to do it. Amen. Just give him that room. He will show you who he is. But remain humble in that spirit. God will prove to you who he is. Amen. In every situation. This is how he handled my prophet. Amen. He made him not to know how to read the Bible. Even until he was 21. He said, I don't know the difference between James and Genesis. You would think he must be having reading the Bible night and day. He was a prophet, he was born, you know, when he was walking through the tree, the tree was talking. So he the back there was the Bible there. Bible has been there since 18 something. Bible has existed. But he wasn't he didn't know how to read it. Look, he said, he said, What is it, Grace? William Brenner, a drunkard son, that don't make any difference. The grace of God saved me. Me, I'm a woman's doctor. That was no good. Don't make any difference. The grace of God saved me, saved you. It's his suffering. He had to ask. He, he, he doesn't have to ask nobody nothing. Amen. He said, I am so glad of that. Hallelujah. He said, can take the, the vilest sinner and make him white as snow. Don't have to ask nobody about it. Oh, oh, he can do it because he's suffering. Amen. Listen quickly now, the prophet said. That was proved at the cross. When there was a violent thief, he deserved to die. God had never come across his mind. He never thought nothing of it. There on the cross, when through those bloody lips, in between the groins, there came a sound, Lord, be merciful to me. And there came another one back to the blood, tears, agony. Christ took a hold and said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Grace did that. How could that thief help himself? No more than Adam could help himself. No more than Eve could help herself. No more than you can help yourself. No more than I can help myself. When no more we could check ourselves up in the milky white way with our booster, we couldn't do it. But the grace of God can do something about it and does it. The grace of God, the sovereignty of the grace of God, he come to that dying thief today that thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Oh, think of it. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in the message, three witnesses. Three witnesses. 1951, Ju July 28th, line 55. I have a phrase there. The prophet said, What is it, friends? Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. Be humble. Let yourself be the lowest of all. Don't ever exalt yourself. If you do, you're going to become a base. Humble yourself, and God will lift you up. Don't figure, don't figure that God owes you anything. Remember, you owe him all. Amen. And we are not under obligation. Or God, God is not under obligation to us. We are under obligation to God. Amen. And love him with all your heart. Believe on him, and God will bless you, I am sure. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the prophet gave a story of a little boy in the message, Show of the Father, 1959, in April 19. That was a little boy, the prophet said, that went to his mother and said, Mommy, can somebody see God? The mother said, No, nobody can see God. He went to his father and said, Daddy, I have asked so much about God. That he is mighty. Can somebody see God? Father said, No, go ask your Sunday school teacher. The young boy went to church. He went to the Sunday school teacher. 
He said, Peter, you've taught me so much about God. I have a question for you. Can somebody see God? He said, no. Go ask the pastor. He went to the pastor. He said, pastor, ask everybody. I want you to tell me. Can somebody see God? The pastor said, no. The young boy said, okay. Nobody can see him. He disturbed his heart so much. And the prophet said, one day, he was in a ship selling with a seller. The seller likes to go fishing, and this young boy used to follow, follow that seller. They are out in the sea somewhere, just selling. And there came a rainbow. And the seller just stood there, watching. And there was thunder and lightning, and he was just in awe. It reminds me of the song, Oh Lord my God. But I often wonder, consider all the works that heart has have made. That was how that song came about. It was a preacher who was going somewhere and he was caught up in the thunder and lightning. He stood in his car and watched an hour as God displays his majesty. And then he began to say it. Oh, consider all the work that heart has made. But the last stanza of that song was written after the war when a young girl in the war camp asked, when shall I go home? And the priest turned to her and said, When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Hallelujah! Amen. But this young boy this day, he wants to know, can I see God? And then when he asked the self this question, the self burst out in tears and said, Son, all my life, I've been seeing God. I see God every day. I see God in that lightning. I see God in that thunder. I see him every day. And then somebody say, you cannot see God. It's because you limited God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't limit God, you will see God in me. I will see God in you. Amen. I will see God in his creature. I will see God in nature. I see God in his prophet. Amen. I see God in his children. Amen. I see God in everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because his presence fills everything. But when you limit God, the prophet said, when you limit God, you cannot see him. But when you don't limit God, you see God everywhere. Amen. You see God even in a sinner. Because you can pull that sinner from wretchedness to righteousness. Amen. Because your life can affect that sinner. Amen. Every place you go, if you want to see God, you can see God. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you limit God, I'm putting my corner somewhere. Putting him in a book somewhere. Putting him in a closet somewhere. That's your business. And that's not my God. My God is limitless. My God has no beginning. My God has no ending. My God can do everything. Hallelujah. And I will trust him. I will trust him until my last breath. No matter what comes and go. Hallelujah. Friends may come and go. Church may come and go. But he said, I will not depart from you. You can be deserted. He said, I will not depart from you. Who was that? Him himself. He made a promise. He said, soon the world will see me no more. But you will see me. What is that world? The cosmos. The cosmos. They will not see him. But he said, I will see him. Because he's in me. And he's in you. Hallelujah. Do not limit God. Can you see God? Yes, I can see God. Open your eyes. You will see him today. Hallelujah. He's everywhere. You said, you know, prophet said, you see, God is not limited. Amen. That people can limit God. You see, God is not hid. In that message, show us the Father. Line 19, the prophet said, And if God is hid, He's hid to those that are blind to see Him. Yes. Amen. That's what He said on 19, line 19. Amen. If God is hidden, He's hidden from those that are so blind to see Him. Because it's not hidden. He said, Because anyone can look around. They can see God in the blooming flower. How the little flower, they die. The seed, they burst open. The palms, they run out and everything, they're gone. But then, that flower live, live again. Oh, that's what Job said. Shall a man live again when he died? He said, a tree will die and the tree will live again. But a man will die. But that's the end thereof. Shall I live again? But the, but the, the poor Job then, he looked beyond the curtain of time. He saw the coming of the Lord. He said, now I know my Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. And the prophet is speaking this message. God has a way making a flower to live again. How about a man that's made in his own image? Hallelujah. My God is limitless. You cannot limit him. You can't put him in a box somewhere. God is in the universe. God is in the creation. God is in his children. God is in his world. God is in the prophet. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. God is his own word. The word was there before him. You can't separate him from the word. God is in his people. God was in Job. God was in 
woman. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah, he wanted to see God. He has come to man Camel. He took those 400 bows. He did something with them. But then he began to wear it. Why? Because Jezebel said, because you have done this, I put a death sentence on you. I'm going to kill you. And Elijah ran for his life. He ran for his life. He ran to the wilderness. And God came to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing there? He said, oh, um, I am scared. My people, they have come from you. I'm the only one. Nobody's worshiping you but me. And the scripture say, and God said, I am going to speak. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there is Elijah. When he heard the voice of God, he looked. He thought it was the thunder. It was not the thunder. Hallelujah. He thought it was the lightning. It was not the lightning. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was a still small voice that spoke to him. And that voice said to him, Elijah, go to the city. And know the king of Syria. And know the king of Jerusalem. He said, go to the city. And there you will find a young man named Elisha. He will follow you. He said, but Elijah, I got a secret for you. I got 7,000 that have not bowed out to bow. Amen. You see, Amen. Elijah was limiting God. Yes. The first Elijah was limiting God. Amen. He was putting God in a box somewhere. He thought he figured out everything about God. Nobody else is worshiping but himself. God said, Elijah, you got it wrong. I am the one that gave the leaves. I am the one that gave their heart. He said, I gave the knee. Their knee has no balance to bow. I know who they are, but you just don't know them, Elijah. Amen. By the way, there are 7,000. Just preach on Elijah. He said, I'm selecting a man that will take the mantle after you. Amen. His name is Elisha. Move on, Elisha. And when Elijah met Elisha, he just spoke the word. And because the word came to Elisha, he said, Shall I go and tell my family goodbye? Yeah. Because I know this calling is sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just like Ruth of Moabite, God had a plan for Ruth. It doesn't matter the condition. Oh, God has said, You cannot go to Moab. You cannot go to Amorites. These are sons of, and daughters that came out of Warham. Because what happened? Lord slept with the children. That's an abomination before the Lord to produce this generation of the Amorites. And you see, and the Moabite, but God had a plan. There was a seed that was there. It doesn't matter how the earth was. There was a seed that called Ruth. And God was watching that seed. Hallelujah. And God had to trouble the seed. And caused Naomi to leave her place with the husband and move to her mobile. When she got there, the husband died, the children died, and there was Oprah, and there was Ruth. Hallelujah! And the word of God came to them, and they hears Naomi. Naomi said, I am going back to where the word came from. I am going back to Jerusalem. I am going back to the land of my promise. You stay in your land. Hallelujah! But because Ruth, a type of the Gentile bride, you came out of worshiping idol, you came out of nothing. Why do we pump ourselves up? Our forefathers worship idol, they eat animal sacrifice to idol, but yet the grace of God was sufficient to go down and dig me out, to go down and dig you out. Hallelujah! That was Ruth, because the word of God came to her, and the book of Ruth was four books. And the first four book of Ruth, the first one was Ruth being called. And when Ruth was called, Ruth obeyed the voice. And Ruth following the word because Naomi took Ruth to the word. And when Ruth followed the word, then Ruth was in service. That's Ruth chapter 3. Ruth was in service. And Ruth chapter 4, Ruth was being paid. Hallelujah. One day, I will defy gravity. One day, you shall see me not. Why? It's time for my pay to come. Today is a day of labor for every child of the Most High. You keep laboring, and the world will carry on as if nothing is happening. They will mock you. They will laugh at you. But be resolute. I know who you are. Hallelujah. Let the naysayers say whatever they want to say. I don't listen to that. I want to keep my eyes on the prize. There is a cost that's before me. I must run this race. You must run this race. When then Ruth declared unto Naomi, Your God is my God. Your people, they are my people. That is the sovereignty of God. The same God that says, Don't go to Amorite. Don't go to Moabite. But he had a plan in Moabite. There was a seed that was predestinated. And by adoption, she came unto the house of Israel. And she was married by Boaz, the king's man with 
him, the descendants of David. From there, there was Jesse. From there, there was Obed. Hallelujah. Bless him in the name of the living God. We cannot limit God. God can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. The prophet said on that day, some people will be shocked because of the people you will see. You think they will never make it? And God is telling you, those are the real worshipers. Oh, hallelujah. When you worship God in spirit and in truth, God sees that. Hallelujah. Are you sure you're not limiting God? Are you sure you're not making the same mistake that they made? According to historians, he said even the book of Ruth was contentious to be written in the Bible. Because they said, how can we write this Gentile in the Bible? He said there was a contention to write the book of Ruth amongst all the prophets. Is it because of what? That they must write such a woman. Such a woman that came from such a land that God forbade. What makes us to write her name in the scripture? But someone was moved to put down the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. According to history, blessed be the name of the living God. Because God has predestinated Ruth to be a seed. And there was a Rahab one day. The sovereignty of God found her. Although she was a prostitute, there was nothing good in her. But God was watching his word. Hallelujah. And when the seed is sown, no matter the condition, one day the right rail will come and that seed will germinate. Because God has said so. Because what door God opened, nobody can close it. What God has blessed, nobody can curse it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. God is watching his word. Here comes Ruth now being paid. Hallelujah. And one day, God himself has spoken the word. He will come for recompense. He will come to pay the price. Because Adam has fallen. Adam has fallen. Adam has fallen. The old heaven is shaking. My son has fallen. The angels are crying. Adam has fallen. Adam has fallen. But God said, be still. I have a plan for him. That's my son I know. I made him my own image. I believe in him. He became a living soul. I have a plan for him. Hallelujah. God said, hold your peace. But who shall go? Who shall go? God is asking, who shall I send? But he said, I will go myself. I'm coming down myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Who came down? He was God himself. Let us pick it up in the book of First John. Hallelujah. It was God himself that came down. Hallelujah. Because God knew nobody else can save him but him himself. In the book of 1 John 5 from 1 to 8, he said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is Christ, that person is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him, also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, hallelujah, Amen. when you love God and keep his commandments, that's how you know you are a child of the most high, hallelujah. Amen. Glory, and he continued, he said now, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And when the prophet was preaching that message, how can I overcome? That was the scripture he read. He said, for whatsoever is born of God will overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Now, let's see this. For there are three that bear record in heaven. See now. See, this three that bear record. That's the conversation. Who shall come and save my children? It is God. He said, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. They are one. Hallelujah. They are not separated. That's why he that came was God himself. Hallelujah. Because only the blood of God could save me and you. Amen. And when the blood of God dropped on this earth, 
cannot be said. But then we have to agree. Hallelujah. How can two work together except they agree? Hallelujah. Separate yourself from unbelief. Separate yourself from things of this world. Be thou righteous as the Lord thy God is righteous. Say the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless me the name of the living God. Bless me his holy name. There are three that will bear witness. Hallelujah. One, you must be justified and you must be sanctified and the Holy Spirit must come. There we have to bear witness. There we have to just bear witness. But they are not one. Because the prophet said, and that's the word of God, you can be justified but not sanctified. You can be sanctified but not have the Holy Spirit. But there's no way we have the Holy Spirit without justification and sanctification. Hallelujah! It will not be possible. Hallelujah! You can't have that. You cannot have the Holy Ghost, but you're not justified and sanctified because it's a process. Hallelujah! You cannot be in the water. You can be in the water. You may not get the blood. But if you're in the water, you get the blood. The Holy Spirit drop. It means you've gone through the water. Hallelujah! It means you're justified. Because without justification, you will not have sanctification. That's why we have Luther, and then we have to go from there to John Wesley to the message of our Hallelujah! Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. But the words of God are not the words of man. And sometimes you're looking for God in big things. But see, when Jesus came down in the book of Micah, and Micah proclaimed, You, Bethlehem of Ephraim, he said, You are the least among Judah. But out of you, we come the king. His reign shall have no end. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because it's not the ways of man. He was the least of all Judah, Bethlehem. But out of Bethlehem came the Lord Jesus. That's why when the three major was coming, they first went to Jerusalem. They thought, oh yeah, maybe Herod can tell us about this king. The Herod knew nothing about it. Yeah. When Herod called the wise man, the wise man that he called his own wise man, they said, Lord, well, our master, yeah, he was six that day. there. Micah wrote this stuff. So he must be there in Bethlehem. And I don't say, yeah, yeah, well, why don't you go? Look, when you find, come let me, so I can come and worship him. Mm -hmm. He has a plan. Hallelujah. Yeah. But, but the prophet said, when the three magi went in there, they lost the, the light that was leading them. The star was gone. Right. Mm -hmm. See, when you begin to look for God, you say, it must be big stuff. Maybe the building is huge. If the pastor is a well known pastor, no, you need to know yourself. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the burden. It's you. Hallelujah. The word of God came to us, to you, to me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If I can put the word of God in me, guess what? I will manifest his grace. I will show people that he's alive. That's what he's looking for. Hallelujah. The prophet is not the only child of God. The prophet was giving the word to go and manifest it. That I may see an example and come by example. For Jesus said, I have given you an example to follow. Hallelujah. And the prophet came as a son of man, manifesting this son of man for me to see it is possible, not for me to tell stories and jokes. Hallelujah! No, sir. It's for you and I to know these things, you can do them. Hallelujah! It behooves us to be children of God. Don't limit God. Amen. Don't let no one tell you to limit God. Amen. Never you limit God to a book somewhere or to a man somewhere. God is infinite. Amen. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is beyond your thought. God is beyond time. No Bible wrote about his time. Bible said, in the beginning, what's the beginning? Nobody knows. Moses didn't know. In the beginning. The prophet says, self-existing. Okay. What was before self-existing? You don't know. Who can tell the mind of God? Nobody can tell the mind of God. Okay. You just know who God is. You know what he said for you to do. Just do it. But the time you know the mind of God, you must be God. But you're not God. It's only one God. Hallelujah. When a man claims to be God, you are not making yourself anti-God. Because the scripture tells us God is sovereign. can do whatever he wants to do. That's why when Jesus came, he was not accepted. Because the people were looking for him elsewhere. They had a different thought of who God is supposed to be. It cannot be better him. It cannot be this illegitimate son of Mary. Him is the Messiah. No. You see, they were blinded. Because they have a preconceived image of God in their mind. Amen. And so when God came, they didn't know. Amen. Elijah faced the same thing in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Let's pick that up. I have a few more minutes. Because I think I have the scripture here. Let's pick it up. I think I jotted it down. Hallelujah. Because Elijah was looking for God. But God was his 
still small voice. Hallelujah. That was first King 19. We went through it, but just pick it up here and there. Because you have to see these things. Hallelujah. Let us pick 11. And I, uh, uh, first King 19, 11. And he said, Go forth. Stand upon the mountain. Stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind wrecked the mountain. And break it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And on 12, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And on 13, and it was so when Elijah had it that he now wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou hear, Elijah? Hallelujah. Now you can read the rest of it. That's when God began to ask him, What are you doing here? He began to complain to God. I'm the only one. Nobody else is worshiping God, but only me. God said, No, Elijah, no. I've got 7,000 out there. Go down. I got a job for you to do. Go look for a man called Elisha. When you read the rest, that's what happened there. But God spoke in a still small voice. Not in thunder, not in lightning, not in fire. Hallelujah. It's God in simplicity. Hallelujah. But do not limit God. Amen. God is in his nature. Hallelujah. In the message, Harvest Time, 1964, December 12th, 1979, the prophet said, God. The great creator. Let's try to speak on the form of nature. Pick him up in nature first. To bring him back to the world. Now, nature runs just with the world. Because God is a creator of nature. When you see the way nature works, find out that's the way. That's my first Bible. Was found in nature. I found God in nature. And wheat is nature's product, bread. Make bread out of it and sustain the natural body. Nature holds many secrets. See, we, that's my first time to find God. I was watching nature. I seen there I had to be something. And now I have no education. Therefore, I speak a lot by nature. And I'm not trying to support ignorance, but I am trying to say to you, don't even have to have an education to know God. In the message, Uniting Time and the Sign, 1963, that's August 18, line 78, the prophet said, Watch nature. Oh my, nature. If you only just watch nature, it does the same thing. Nature is God's calendar of sign. Did you know that? Jesus told them to watch nature. The sea will be roaring. See, at times, cloud will get together. They make one big cloud. Well, that's what big little bunch of wind blowing there. This other one little blowing there. And they will blow together. And then they will get a hurricane. See, they unite before they can have the storm. They have to watch the dogs, watch the geese. They unite themselves together before they will leave their country. See, they unite together. You can see them flying from this pond, of this pond, of the, of, from here and there, flying together. They are uniting, getting ready for their takeoff. Hallelujah. That's nature. And God created nature. And nature works by the plan of God. It's a law, an unwritten law of God, that nature works according to his law. Hallelujah. The prophet here is typing nature to who we are. Just the same way the dogs fly together, they get ready. He's telling the bride, get ready. Hallelujah. Bless him in the name of the living God. In the message, it goes tearing up the net. 1958, hallelujah. 94, the prophet said, but there's something about nature that if you just look at nature, you will see God. And God dwells in his universe. It dwells in his people. It dwells in his world. It dwells in his son. He just dwells in his flower. He dwells in everything. God is in the universe. Amen. He's omnipotent. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless him in the name of the living God. Now, I'm coming to closing a little bit because now we're going to have some messages to tell us how God is in the bride. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. In the 
message uniting time and time again. Now this is a three August 18, like one one thirteen. The prophet said, but the church, the bride, is united by one God, yeah. under one spirit, the spirit of God in one holy union of God to be one holy bride to God. That's right. All together, unity of the body. Hallelujah. The body waiting as a bride, as is the bride, as we call ourselves the bride. For the uniting time of the bride, the church is so coming together. It should create such a love among us that we could hardly be away from one another. You hear that? Hardly be away from one another. That's the love we're waiting for, friends, for the rapture to happen. Are we there? Are we holding ourselves back? Are we there, friends? There's no excuse. There's no excuse. We must do this. We must come to form for us to go home. Hallelujah. Because that's the word. Hallelujah. The prophet said, that's right. See, you don't have to beg people to pray. He said, you don't have to beg them to worship God. Hallelujah. You don't have to beg them to do what is right. Hallelujah. They're just so in love with him till there's nothing else. Amen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. In the message rapture, 1965, December 4, like 81, the prophet said, now, the rapture is only, this rapture that we're talking about is only for the bride. Remember, the bride, the bride, see, and the rest of the dead, they live not for a thousand years. This great rapture. If there's not a rapture, friends, friends, where are we at? What are we going to do? What age are we living in? What promise do we have? There's going to be a rapture. Hallelujah. The Bible said there will be a rapture. And it will be only for the elected. The elected lady. The bride in this day pulled out of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, the very word church means God out of. Amen. As Moses called a nation out of a nation. The Holy Spirit is calling the bride out of the church. A church out of a church. Members from every denomination Amen. making up a bride. Amen. Bride tree. Hallelujah. Amen. Said the bride tree. The bride tree is coming out. Hallelujah. And that's one that the bride tree, hallelujah. Amen. The bride, hallelujah, is the one that's going to be in rapture. Amen. That alone, nothing but the bride, the elected one, foreknown by God Amen. from the beginning, Amen. the father's spiritual seed. Hallelujah. Amen. In the message, things that are to be, 1965, December 5, line 10 to the prophet said, now, if we are those attributes of God, See, we cannot live by creed. We cannot live by denomination. We must live by the word. Because the bride is part of the bridegroom. Like any wife is part of the husband. Therefore, we must be the word bride. And what is the word bride? The manifestation of this hour. Hallelujah. See, the bride, not a creed, not a denomination. But the living article of God. A living attribute of God. Displaying the world. The attribute of God in the formation of the bride that's to be expressed in this hour. Yeah. We are now living it. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, Martin Luther could not express the attribute that we are expressing. Hallelujah. Because that was, that was in the beginning, the resurrection, like the corn of wheat that went out into the earth. Hallelujah. In question and answer. Question and answer 494. Now this is the tree. That's a question to the prophet. Is the bride of Christ and the body of Christ the same? Hallelujah! Is the bride of Christ and the body of Christ the same? The prophet said, yes, sir. Hallelujah. See now. See now. See. Don't, I don't want to get started on it because I get a preaching and someone on it. See. But I won't do that. But I want to show you. When God gave Adam his bride, from his side, he said, she is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Is that right? When God gave Christ his bride, the spirit gave the flesh, the bride. He was, he was pierced in the side, under his heart, and water and blood and spirit came forth. That became flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. We are the flesh and the bone. The bride will be the flesh and 
the bond of Christ. Exactly. Hallelujah. Amen. That is his bride. Amen. In another question and answer, here he was asked to the prophet, would the bride of Christ have a ministry before the rapture? Hallelujah. Will the bride of Jesus have a ministry before the rapture? The prophet said, sure. Sure, that's what's going on right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're blinded not to see it, we just pray for you. Amen. Open your eyes. The bride has a ministry. Amen. The ministry of the bride will be here until the rapture. Amen. The bride must speak. Hallelujah. Amen. God is not dumb. Therefore, the bride is not dumb. Amen. The bride will pray. The bride will preach. Amen. The bride will pray for the sick. Amen. The sick shall recover. Signs and wonders shall follow them. Hallelujah! Amen. The bride will keep manifesting the bridegroom to this dying world that we know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's sovereign. He will do it the way he wants to do it. That's where people miss it. When he does it the way he wants to do it, it's not the way most people are thinking. Then they say it's not him. But if you open your spiritual eye and watch the fruit of the bride, then you declare these are doing the same thing with the bridegroom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet says, certainly, it is the message of the hour. The bride of Christ, sure, she consists of, the prophet says, she consists of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. Friends, where is the confession? It's 1963. Where is the confession? If you want to see a fork, you find one. Yes. If you want to criticize, you find one. Right. If you want to see Christ, you shall see him. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. If somebody sees you, friends, they want to see God in you, it's there. Amen. If they want to gossip you, it's there too. I love them there. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory! I want to see God in you. Would you see God in me? That's my goal. I want to see God in all of you. Amen. Whoever is watching, I want to see God in you. I want to see God in a human being so that we can begin to work on it, to purify it, to bring it to the stature of a perfect man. Because first, there's got to be a seed for the seed to germinate. Yes. Hallelujah! And if you see God, you begin to water it, you begin to water it, you begin to grow. It will have leg, it will have hand, it will have run. Because first, you have to grow before you have to run. Hallelujah! But why yet I was a sinner? He loved me. Hallelujah! Why yet I was a sinner? He died for me. Hallelujah! And today, he is still calling the sinners for repentance. Hallelujah! The cross is still effective. The blood is still effective. The prayers of the saints shall heal the sick. The fervent prayers of the saints have failed much. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory! The prophet said, yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. You have apostles. We have prophets. We have teachers. We have evangelists. We have pastors. Is that right? That's the bride of Christ. Sure. She's got a ministry. Great ministry. Oh, I love the way the prophet put it. Great ministry. Why is it great? Because God is great. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there any greater than God? Oh, God. Hallelujah. God is great. Hallelujah. Are you happy this morning, this afternoon? Amen. Are you happy this afternoon? Amen. Oh, Amen. let go of every stress you have and rejoice. Amen. And glorify them of the living God. God is great. The bride is great. The world is great. Hallelujah. He's in fire with God in among us. Amen. God in his church. Amen. God is in the bride. Hallelujah. Let's go in the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet said they are humble. That's where they miss them. They are humble. Yes. God is in the bride. Then they are humble. Yes, Hallelujah. You know, they don't make too much noise. They don't fight. If you want to fight, just walk away. Yes. You don't have no fight. No argument. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. In the message, the Invisible Union, 1965, November 25, like in the prophet said, May I add to this woman grace? May I place her in the Bible also? Also called the elect lady, Miss Grace, I'm going to talk about you. You know, the Bible declares said to be the elect lady. If you know this elect comes from the word elected lady. One lady among all the other ladies was elected. Like the virgin was to bring forth the body of God on the earth. Hallelujah. She was the elected lady. God chose Mary. Hallelujah. And, and also God has chosen an elected lady, which is his bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
She's elected. Hallelujah. I hope you are a member of that tonight, prophecy. Yes. Across this world, across this nature, I hope you are a member of the elected lady. Hallelujah. The illustration here showing the relationship of the bride and Christ, the elected lady, and how she was to be brought to him. Hallelujah. And where she will come from. Hallelujah. And how she would be brought to him. The church here, illustration. Hallelujah. That we got a few. He's illustrated by a woman. Which is a woman is always the type of a church because the church consists of a bride. You consider the bride, the bride. She's the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. In the message, spoken word, we are just about to close in a few seconds. Spoken word, 1962. Hallelujah. Oh, there the prophet said, the true bride, just like Mary, we have a virgin womb. The true bride has a virgin womb for, 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 the, for the word, which is Christ. When Christ the word comes to the bride, she will be the same as, as virgin by the word. I hope, I hope you're going over it, the prophet said. He said, brother Neville, he said, brother Neville, I hope you understand that, hallelujah. He said, what, what was he? The word, the word of God, upon his vesture, he had a, a name written, the word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, which we read this morning, and He was made flesh, He dwelt among us, He is God, and God is the Word, and when His bride comes, she'll be the same product that is a virgin. Did Jesus Christ belong to a denomination? Did Jehovah, neither does His bride, hallelujah, she's part of Him. She needs no dogma, no dogma. She, she won't have any. You know, she'll be absolutely a virgin. How? By the word a man. She's punctuating every word. God says with an a man, a man, oh, be it unto me according to the word, a man, oh my. There you are punctuating God's word. Have a virgin one book. Prophet said, have a virgin womb. What will she come out of? A virgin womb. The word. What did Jesus come out of? A virgin womb. See. Hallelujah. And my final quote here is on the message identified masterpiece of God. 1964, December 5. 1968, the prophet said, now we notice that God begins to make him a bride for Christ. So, the bride must be identified with him and in him because it is part of him now the bride is part of him she is part of him the word for that day for that day the bride becomes part of the world for it's christ now you believe that we have to be in christ in christ we have to be of christ in christ part of christ what is a woman when she takes a man or a man takes a woman that woman has to be part of him. They are no longer two. They are one. And when God in Christ became one, then we are one. Because God was the word. And the word was made flesh. And the flesh and the word became one. And when the church becomes Christ's bride, she and the gospel are the same. How can you say then that the days of miracle is past? How can you say then he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever? How can you now say these things that the, the apostles, the, 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 the disciples, or, or somebody in another day, when you are part of him, you and I are part of him. How can we deny the very word that we are part of? How can we deny the very manifestation of the word? We got the power, friends. We have the authority, friends. Let's use it. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not fail, the prophet said. How about that in Revelation 22? When he got through writing the book, he said, I testify, if any man shall add any word or take word out of it, his path will be taken out of the book of life. Let's be on our feet. If any man will add or take out, his path will be taken out of the book of life. How do they take out? By limiting God. They take him out. Yes. When you limit God, when you say God cannot do this, 
You just leave it there again. When you tell somebody, oh, maybe you had a dream. God spoke to you. They said, no, God doesn't speak no more. Okay. You tell somebody, the word of God said, I lay my hand on the sick and pray. They shall recover. They said, no, you can't do that. Because they limit God yes. to one person, to one corner, to one creed, to one dogma. That's what Revelation 22 said. Anyone doing that, you need to repent. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see you. Just ask God. Because when Peter said, Thou art Christ, Son of the living God, Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood never revealed this to you. Amen. But my Father in heaven, Amen. upon this rock, in my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. When he is revealed to you, he makes himself known to you. You are comfortable with him. He begins to walk through you. He begins to manifest himself through you. God in simplicity, he is looking for a hand to manifest. He is looking for a voice so he can speak. He is looking for a leg that can walk around and talk about him. He's looking for a mouth that will glorify his name. He's looking for somebody to sing glory to his name. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Blessed be his holy name. Let us pray. At this time, you can take your mind out of every filth. Take your mind out of every concern of this world. Let us focus on Jesus. Let's put our mind on Jesus. Yes. The thief at the cross. Yes. That's all he had to do. Yes. Say, remember me. And Jesus said, today. The prophet said, he wasn't thinking about him. There was no preaching done. There was blood dropping from the thief's mouth. And he could barely speak. With the last word he heard. And here's Jesus. A pitiful sight. Here is the righteous God. There nailed at the cross. Taking my sin. Took my position. Took your position. Representing sin already judged, for that was a cross. That was what Moses declared. That was the present serpent Moses declared. Sin already judged. There is the Lord taking your position, my position, the right position, the elect position, that we might be rescued from the world of sin. We might be redeemed. We might be born again. For when we are born again as we are, the old things are dead. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. We can never lose anymore because we are not the one living now. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. At this time, keep concentrating on Him. Think about the cross. Think about the prize. Think about the promise. Think about what He came to do. Think about what He has done. Think about what He promised yet to do. For He said, soon the world will see me no more. But you and I will see Him because He will be in us. Reconciling us to himself, declaring to this world that he's alive. When they see me, they see Jesus. When they see you, they see Jesus. When you speak, it is Jesus. When you walk around, it is Jesus. They see God in you. God is in his own church. His church is the elect. God is in his people. Hallelujah. God is in his elect. Hallelujah. God is in nature. God is in the word because he is the word. God was made flesh and dwelt among men. That's Jesus Christ. God was in his son. That's Jesus Christ. God was in all the prophets, the sons of Jacob that came out of Jacob, that are called Israel. They manifested all the prophets of old before the New Testament. Hallelujah. Because God separated Esau from Jacob. He said, Esau, I hate, but Jacob I love. And out of Jacob came Israel. And out of Israel came all the prophets. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. And today, today, God has said us, hallelujah. He is now a many member body because he promised to be there. Would you let him do something with our life? Would you give him the liberty? Would you give him the utterance? Would you give him all? He said, I stand and knock. And if anyone will open, I will come in and sup. Lord Jesus, we invite you, Lord. Take preeminence. Take full control. Lord, we thank you for the word you have spoken unto us. Help us, Lord, not to limit you, but to take you in your entirety to understand you fill every gap. You fill this universe. 
there was no beginning but you. For the Bible can only say, in the beginning. There's no age. You're ageless. There's no time. You're timeless. You're infinite. The lips of man cannot even describe you. There is no word in the dictionary of man to describe who you are. There's nothing that can describe you. But you allow us to know who you are. Through your word, we know you. Through your prophets, we know you. We can only say we know God. But we cannot say everything that you will do. For you say, I will do as I choose. We know that even prayer can make you even change your mind. You told Hezekiah he will die. And yet he prayed, you change your mind. Lord, if there be any evil before us that we don't see, maybe driving, maybe carrying on with our business, with our family, Lord, would you take it away, Lord? Would you let our life experience, oh Lord, be something that we can always glorify your name on? Lord, at this time, we bring our families in the picture. Many families are divided. Many families are fighting and fussing, not understanding that here on earth, we don't have any continuing city. They have one to come. Lord, I ask you to help our families to look beyond every issue, every problem, every misunderstanding, and place their eyes on thee. For in you, there's unity. In you, there's grace. In you, there's love. In you, there's everything we can ever desire. My Lord, my God, ascent of days, the bright morning star, be thou lifted up, be thou glorified. Amen. Who is not unto thee? Amen. Oh, David said, I will lift my head. Unto the mountains from whence does my salvation come? My salvation will come from the God of Abraham. For the God of Israel, he never slumbered. Amen. Jehovah Jireh is his name. Yeah. Jehovah is his name. Yeah. The greater Lord is his name. I am that I am. Hallelujah. Amen. My banner, my strength. You said you are now our friend. You have become our friend. Thank you for this service. Thank you for what Chris, Chris Van Ayer and his family, his children, his wife, brothers and sisters, his mother. Every attribute of him, his effort to come to fellowship is not in vain. Car broken down didn't stop him. He's determined to give you what belongs to you, a time of service and fellowship. We do this in remembrance of you. Not that a man will puff up, but that your name will be lifted up. My Lord, my God. But I see first and family, Lord. I don't know where they are, but I pray it is well with them. Bless him and his wife and children and child. But I Pedro and family. Bless them. But I guess now and family. Lord, I know there's no time too late for you. Lazarus came forth after four days in the grave. Because corruption know his master. Lord Jesus, my wife is before you. Thank you for giving her strength, dedication to service, love of fellowship. My best friend she has become. Thank you for her life. My children are in your hand. Bless them. Bless their days on earth. My life is in your hand. All that I do, Lord, be thou glorified. This fellowship, this place you gave us, to just come and spend some time before thee, as one body, under one baptism, under one Holy Ghost, have recompense, Lord. Have glory, Lord. Be thy glory. Be thy lifted up. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, hallelujah. May the name of Jesus God be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, my God, everything is before you. Thank you. We pray with thanksgiving. In the mighty name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me ask Brother Chris to say for that prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the sobering moment that we can come here to examine our lives, Lord, to make sure that everything is ready, Lord, for that great translation faith, Lord, that you've put on the inside of us. <clears throat> we heard this morning that there's an no limitation to God. Oh, God, sometimes things look impossible. Sometimes things look hard. Oh, God, but is there anything too hard? That's what you ask Sarah, Lord God. Is there anything too hard for you? And this morning we know all things are possible to them that believe. Oh God, we know the enemy's job is to destroy our faith, to try and weaken our faith, Lord. But this morning we pray that Hallelujah. you would encourage your people that's here this morning. Oh God, that we would take a hold of your word with all that we have, with all our might and all our strength to believe, Lord, what you have spoken through your prophets. Oh God, to claim what's ours, to take every promise and possess it, Lord Jesus. We pray as we go for our final destination here today, Lord, to our homes. I pray that this same Hallelujah. spirit that's in this place will hover Amen. and be around us, Lord God, Amen. throughout the week, Lord God. Amen. I pray those that need Hallelujah. healing, that will come and just give a, a healing touch that's to your incredible. people Amen. this morning. Those that are weak in faith, may you strengthen their faith, Lord God. Yeah. Those that need a touching body, yes. we pray that you would come on the scene and yes. be glorified amongst your people, Lord yes. God. Bless us as we go, Thank Lord you, God. And may your spirit that's here in this place yes, abide with us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Make us better Christians, Lord, Amen. to worship you and to Amen. walk in faith, believing that all Hallelujah. things will work together to them that love the Lord. Amen. Bless Brother Paul in a Thank special you, way. May you encourage his Thank heart, Lord Jesus. God, to stand firm on your Hallelujah. word, Lord God, his wife, Amen. his family. I pray that you bless them in Thank a special you, way, Lord Amen. God. Be with us throughout the remaining Jesus. part of this day. We Hallelujah. ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God bless you. God bless you.